So it's been just over a month since I went backpacking in Japan. I had always wanted to visit Tokyo and I was excited about visiting the city and experiencing the culture for the first time. However, finding a suitable Airbnb for the duration turned out to be surprisingly challenging and very expensive, especially for someone like me who was on a tight budget and the fact that the cost of living is so high nowadays really didn't help. I did manage to find accommodation for the first few weeks though and only needed to find a place to stay for the last couple of days. Around two weeks into my vacation, I did search for some other apartments that were available on Airbnb, but they were far too expensive for such a short-term accommodation. Fortunately, one of the locals was kind enough to recommend an English-speaking real estate agent just around the corner that specialised in extremely cheap accommodation, and they even accepted renting out to foreigners. After a quick visit to their office, they seemed more than happy to let me stay at one of their small one-bedroom apartments for a very low price. I know I should have checked the condition of the apartment before reaching any agreement, but I was really just eager to make the most of the last few days of my vacation and glad that I managed to find a place so quickly and without too much bureaucracy. And they already asked the landlady to check in on the apartment before I arrived to make sure everything was in order. Admittedly, the apartment was quite shabby and old and looked like it hadn't been lived in or properly maintained for a while, but I wasn't planning on spending very long there and I was exploring the city and eating out during most of the day anyway. Although it would have been nice to actually have had a proper bed to sleep in, as opposed to an old filthy stained mattress rolled out onto the floor. Between that and the strange odour of the place, it was no wonder why it was so cheap, but at least I had a roof over my head. The sudden rumble in my stomach was a fitting reminder that I hadn't eaten a proper meal that day, and I remember seeing a small ramen stall on the way over, which was just a few blocks away from the apartment. Since I still wasn't very familiar with the area, I chose a convenient spot with a view of the apartment, just to avoid getting lost or having to ask for directions later on. I was already dreading the thought of going back to the apartment to be honest, so I wasn't really in a hurry to finish a nice hot ramen soup and enjoy the nightlife. However, a short time after that, it started to rain, so I wrapped things up and headed back to the apartment a lot sooner than I would have liked. Getting caught in the rain didn't bother me that much, but realizing that the power was out and that I wasn't able to recharge my phone was kind of annoying. On top of that, I noticed that the floor was soaking wet. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, it appeared that now I had a leaky ceiling to deal with. With only the light from the hallway shining through the frosted kitchen windows, I couldn't see all that much, but as I looked closer, I realized something very unsettling. The ceiling wasn't leaking at all, and the floor was in fact covered with wet footprints, as if someone had just walked in from the rain without wearing any shoes. Being such a tiny apartment, it didn't take me long to confirm that no one else was there, and none of my things had been rummaged through or stolen. Despite being in the dark and feeling creeped out, I realized I had forgotten an important detail. The landlady who was supposed to check in on things before I arrived. Perhaps there was a mix-up at the office or she ended up being late for whatever reason. At least that seemed like the most plausible explanation. I was feeling really tired at that point, but as I was about ready to call it a night, I started hearing what sounded like a leaky faucet and when I looked over to the kitchen, I was surprised to see the shadow of a woman moving past the window. She appeared to stop for no reason other than to peer through the window as if she was trying to grasp whether or not the apartment was empty. I didn't appreciate the intrusion, but eventually she continued walking down the hallway and I quietly went over to the kitchen to tightly close the faucet to stop the dripping, so I could finally get some sleep. And that's when I noticed something through the frosted windows that really gave me the chills. I couldn't really tell if it was the same woman from before, but it felt really strange having someone just lurking around outside. It was still raining and the door was definitely locked, so I thought if I could just concentrate on the sound of the rain, I could probably fall asleep and just get my mind off it. But as I contemplated on what to do next, 
I was startled by the sound of the front door slowly creaking open. I was too curious not to look, but I really wish I hadn't. Needless to say, I didn't sleep at all that night, even after grabbing my things and checking into the nearest hotel. After returning home, I did a bit of research and realized that the real estate agent that I spoke to was specialized in renting out and selling stigmatized properties, also known as Jikobukan. Apparently, this term is associated with properties with tenants that have died under disturbing circumstances, which explains why they rent out so cheap, because the superstitious locals won't go anywhere near them. I've never considered myself very superstitious, but I'll be sure to avoid any stigmatized properties in the future.